So back in the day in the 90s, you played Travis Bean. Mm -hmm. What started you down that path and how did that progress to you now kind of going with the electrical guitar um, company stuff? It was kind of by chance, but I had also played um, aluminum guitars or aluminum bass guitars before that with Kramers when they originally had the aluminum necks back in the late 70s, early 80s. And then Travis Bean kind of showed up. It seems like in Chicago, um, the producer we were working with, Steve Albini, had it, some yeah. of them laying around. And I just played his and I thought, wow, that is a good sound. And I had heard them also, uh, Public Image Limited, the guitarist Keith Levine had mm -hmm. used them. Uh, and it just has an aggressive sort of edge to it that you just don't get from other guitars. So I played those for a while, um, but they did have, to me, there's always going to be certain trade-offs like weight and balance and things like that. Um, so uh, when uh, Kevin Burkett from the Electrical Guitar Company mm -hmm. approached me about, you know, making guitars for me, I said, well, I'd like to have a hand in the design because there's some things about uh, the guitars I've played in the past that I think could be improved upon. And I had actually worked at Gibson for a year yeah. back in like 2005 or something. So what we did with these, these Chessies, and that one there, I don't know if you can get it in in this shot, but um, we wanted to get, get them lighter and try to keep it at or under eight pounds. Okay. And we wanted to get the, uh, the pitch of the neck and wanted to get it almost like a Les Paul, like three degrees of pitch. Mm -hmm. And try to get the balance between the body and the neck a little more together so it doesn't neck dive yeah. the way Travis Bean sometimes can. And so we worked on that and I think we accomplished that. It seems like uh, other aluminum ones and fenders, there's almost no, there's no pitch to mm -hmm. them at all. They're very flat and I, when I was younger, I couldn't put my finger on what it was that made them feel the way they did and made me play, it forced me to play differently and I wasn't sure I liked it. And then when I worked at Gibson and I set up a lot of Les Pauls, yeah. um, I noticed that there was almost never intonation problems. I thought, I, it, I really came to admire the Les Paul design in that mm -hmm. setting them up, there was, it was rare when you ever had a problem with intonation or anything with those. And part of it, I was convinced, was it's more like a traditional stringed instrument where you've got that degree of pitch so when you hold it up and look at it like that, yeah. the body is flat and then the strings come down at an angle like a traditional stringed instrument, mm -hmm. like a violin, like a cello or whatever. Um, so I thought, well, if we could do that with an aluminum guitar, maybe that would be just the ticket. And I think I, think I was right. Um, it also feels right, too. You've just, you, you don't think of three degrees as being much, but when you're driving and it's a three degree downhill yeah. grade, that's significant, yeah. right? You notice it. Well, I think the same thing goes with this. And then when you're playing, your arm and wrist and shoulder, you feel it after a while and you feel, it just feels more natural and, it, and just physically comfortable to play. Mm -hmm. And as I've gotten older, all those little things make a difference. Yeah. <laughs> 